All right, this is Jake from Maple Forge. We're up here at the uh, Austerlitz Historical Society today. It's going to be my first uh, video on YouTube actually showing you how to make something. I'm going to be making a wall hook. All right, it's a nice simple project. When I was teaching classes up here, it's the first piece I would show someone to make. You know, you learn a lot of your basic techniques doing it. And at the end of the day, you have something you can actually use. So that's what we're going to be going for today. I'm using a pizza piece of 3 8 square stock as a parent material. Right now, I'm just warming the piece up. This is a coal forge. So, burning by tumulus coal. We got a mechanical blower. That's the noise you hear in the background. It's take a minute to get the material hot. After that, I'll go pretty quick. Um, I'm going to try to keep the talking to a minimum. Just kind of, I'll talk a little bit as the steps as I go. But I want it to be more, you know, you guys be able to see what I'm actually doing. If you have any uh, comments or questions, you know, don't be afraid to put them in there. I'll try to answer questions to the best of my ability. Using mild steel today, there's no reason to go with a high carbon or medium carbon steel with this. And if you like what you see, if you don't like it, so please subscribe and uh, share it with your friends if they have any interest. Right now, the material is just about hot enough. The hotter the metal is, the softer it is, the easier it works. So now it's nice and hot. First, I'm going to do is I'm going to hold the, the piece fairly high and the face of my hammer fairly high. I'm kind of working on the very edge of the anvil, almost pinching it, kind of like that, but against the edge of the anvil. Of course, if your stock is a little misshapen, just go ahead and straighten it out. Okay, so now I have a fairly steep angle, fairly steep taper. If you want a nice, sharp, blunt point, you hold the piece high. Next is drawing this taper out. As you draw it out, you're making that taper longer and the angle more gentle, more gradual. So as I go, I'm going to lower the angle of the piece and lower the angle of my hammer face, which will draw out that stock. Now it's getting fairly cold now, so I'll put it back to the fire. As you can see, the taper is getting more gradual already. But I'll do that probably one more time, maybe twice. So again, lowering the angle of the piece and the angle of the hammer face. Really pretty much more of the angle of the piece on the anvil. Because when you're hitting from the top, the anvil is also doing work on the bottom. So now, again, that taper is more gradual than before. So next thing I'm going to do is right now you can see it's a square taper. I want to make that a round taper. To go from square to round, what you do is you hit the corners in. So 
if you have a square and you knock the corners in equally, you'll have an octagon. An octagon is pretty much round at that point, especially on such a small piece like this. The more round you want, the more you hit the corners in. And with the very end of it being so small and pointed, you want to be careful not to hit that too hard. You'll just totally crush the end. So a lot of times I'll actually start towards the back, wherever I want the taper to end, or the roundness to end. I'll do that first and work forward. And it also helps to keep it even. You know, if you're giving something away as a gift or you're selling something, you want it to look, I mean, you want it to look nice no matter what. But especially if you're giving it away or if you're selling it, you want your stuff to look nice. So, let's say I'll try to line up the end of the taper first, and then I just have to work forward. So now it's roughly octagon. I hit the four corners in, and it's fairly round. But I'll go through and do that one more time. Knock a few more of those corners down, eyeball it, and um, you know, be more round. The more round you want it, the more the more of this you do. Me, usually at least twice, maybe three times if I want to get it really nice and round and even. But if you make it look too nice, it looks like it came out of the machine and not from your hand. So I like to make sure it still looks handmade. So again, I'll go through, just, if you have trouble seeing the high spots, one little trick you can do, kind of blow on it. And the little cool, the little edges, the little points and corners will actually kind of stick out. They'll cool down just enough for you to kind of see them. So if you're having problems seeing that, just blow on it and you'll see that very corner just the very corner cool off just enough to where you can see it better just a little uh, little trick I've learned by accident so but now it's fairly round and this is something you can do a little bit colder than you would normally so now that's nice and rounded okay now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the small eye, which is here, all right? I'm going to do that over the edge of the anvil, over the edge of the face. It's just going to be a glancing blow over the side. You don't want to hit this too hard. You're really not trying to change the shape of the stock. You're not trying to change it from round to something else. You're just trying to move it. So I'll have that nice and hot and just do light glancing blows over the end. Maybe a little more. And then come over with the hammer, moving the stock and the face of the hammer a little. And bring them over till they just, just touch. Just like that. All right, I'm going to put that back in the fire with that little eye facing up, so you're less likely to burn it. Next, I'm going to make what I call the belly of the hook, this part right here. All right. Now, again, I'm going to get that nice and hot. I'm going to cool off that little eye because I have to hit that. This part's going to be done over the horn. Let me just make sure I got the horn in the camera shot so you can see that. I'll try to even to zoom in a little bit on it. So maybe you can see it a little bit better as I'm doing that. You can see what I'm talking about. Come on. We like that. This is how I do all of these. So as you're seeing me do it, it's how I make them. Now I'm going to pull off just the very edge of that eye tip that way I can hit it just like this because you want to hit it down and again you're not hitting against the horn of the anvil you're hitting just past it you're trying to shape it is what you're trying to do
And the horn is made for bending, so you take advantage of its shape. It makes your life easier. If the tool can make your life easier, do it. Okay, so now got the belly of the hook, and I'll put this piece back in the fire, and I'll change the angle of the camera again. Back over to the face. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is shorten the overall length because I don't need a hook, a wall hook that's three and a half feet long. To do that, I'm going to use cutting hardy. A hardy is basically a chisel that sits in your anvil. A hot cut hardy. There's a lot of different hardy tools, but that's the one you'll see me use the most more than anything. Instead of taking the chisel to the piece, you take the piece to the chisel. And it's called a hot cut because you want the piece hot when you cut it. It's not a cold chisel, it's a hot chisel. So it's a hot cut party. to the hardy, figure out how long you want it. One good solid hit, turn it 90 to have a nice even point, even line. I like to go from the sides and what's going to be the front. That way I don't distort the front too much. And you don't cut all the way through, almost all the way through, okay? Now using a pair of 3-8 bolt tongs, you can grab onto it and just snap it off. At this point, if the stock is a little bent, straighten it out. Take the cutting hardy out because you don't want to bust that against your fingers. Now, where I cut that off, on the very edge there, there's a little bit of a burr, which I want to clean up. So I'm going to get that hot again. I'm going to use a farrier's rasp. Um, a farrier's rasp will work as a hot file. So using the finer edge of a farrier's rasp. The coarse side is just way too coarse for anything. I'll try to do this so you can see it. Metal's fairly hot, and all I'm really trying to do is just to knock that little burr off the top. I'm really not looking to shape it, really. I mean, I do shape it a little bit as I'm going, of course, but basically, it's trying to knock off that burr from where I broke it. Okay, so now that burr is gone. I'll get it hot one more time, and then what I'm going to do is create this piece, the shouldered edge, okay, that gives you a nice place to put a nail or a screw to hang it from. So it's going to be half on, half off the hammer when I hit it, or half on, half off the anvil when I hit it. That'll create a shoulder. And so half on, half off. Once you make a line, keep it there. So you're driving down. Creating a shoulder. Okay. Next thing you do is to punch a hole through it. You could drill a hole. I'll punch a hole. Again, the harder the metal is, the softer is the easier to work, so you want it fairly hot when you punch it. It makes your life a lot easier. It's going to take a couple heats to punch through this, because you can't punch straight through the face of the anvil, of course. So, come on. This is where it's really handy if you got a third hand or a buddy to hold it for you. But 
it's it happens, it's part of life, so you just work with it. Right now, I'm really just kind of making an indent in the back. And of course, it's if they get hot again. tone change what you're doing that's from the fact that when you're punching the metal you're compressing it and once you compress it to the point where it won't move anymore you can feel it in your hand and you can hear the change of the tone if you keep going you'll just mushroom over the tip of your punch and it'll get stuck in your piece so you don't want to do that trust me if you, if you make that mistake more than once you'll remember it so now we're going to punch from the front, line up where you punched it in the beginning, and come over to the Pritchell hole. Cool off the tool. I just like to flatten it out because it usually does get distorted. So now you've got a hole. All right, at this point, there's still enough heat in that stock towards the hole. So what I'll do is I'll put my mark into it. That's how I sign my piece. I'll show you that when it's done. All right, now, at, that, at this point, I'm going to put the body of it back in the fire. I'm going to put a, uh, an ornamental twist into it. It serves no other purpose. It just looks nice. All right, so to do this, you've got the vise. I'll change the uh, camera angle so you can see the vise and maybe zoom in a little bit. So there's the vise. The whole... Zoom in a little more so you can see it over there. So for that, we'll be using the vise and a twisting wrench. Vice, twisting wrench, also called a monkey wrench. Basically any, any type of wrench, anything that will hold it. You know, an adjustable wrench will work just fine. If you're working with larger stuff, you might want to wall the piece of stock on this end so you can get two hands on it. But again, this stuff is fairly small, so it twists fairly easily. Just below my initial so I don't distort that. And now do one full rotation. Hopefully, you're getting a good view of this on the camera. And now's a good time to look at it if it looks distorted for one way or the other. I'm trying to straighten it out, but that looks pretty good. And a good way to tell if it's bent or twisted, you know, twist a little too much one way or the other, of course, just look down it. Take a wire brush and just brush off any loose scale. Or another thing you can do that makes it really easy, grab it by the front with your tongs, obviously, and hold it up against something. The chimney's nice because it's nice and flat. And you can look at it up against the wall and say, okay, it's a little bent a little this way, it's bent a little that way. But this is pretty good. All right, so I'm going to change the uh, angle of the camera again back to the anvil so you can see what I'm doing next. So now, back to the anvil. At this point, you're just cleaning off any scale, wired, hitting it with a wire brush. It's still hot, which is good. 
because the very next thing, you see the twist is in there. Next thing is to apply some uh, finish. I use beeswax. It's a very convenient finish. Some people use oil. Some people you use whatever you want. I like using beeswax because you can hold on to it. It's still a nice finish. Gives it kind of like a dark and antiqued, you know, look. Helps protect it from rust if you put it outside. Of course, it will eventually rust. Nothing's going to stop it forever. But now, if you're going to paint this a certain color <coughs> with any type of paint, I wouldn't put wax on it because the wax, won't, the paint won't stick to the wax, of course. But you know, just enough to. Get, <clears throat> get a layer of it on there. Let that smoke on there for a minute. You can see it's still smoke on there. Then I just go through and kind of with a towel kind of blot off any heavy extra wax when you so when you cool it off there's not a big clump of it on there especially where the tongs are because that'll kind of hold the puddle cool it off and again this is mild steel so you can just dunk it right in the water it's not going to change anything it's not going to affect it at all dry it off There you go. Just made your uh, first wall hook. You know, simple but a handy thing to use. Right to, you know, right now you can put a screw through it, nail it, hang something up. All right, that's how you do that. All right, have fun.